Hi, so exactly two people asked me why I stayed in the UK and I thought I'd take those questions very seriously and answer them in this video. So it's a little, it's a little chat, you know, so we can understand why I stayed after my marriage failed. And I remember I had put a community post on my YouTube channel, my main YouTube channel, Teso Gamba. And it was about, I think, me getting Isla or something like that. I don't remember what I was talking about. But there's a guy who commented, Oh, why did you go to the UK? You are rich in Kenya. <laughs> I mean, I was not rich. But I was not a damsel in distress. So I'm sure some people are very curious as to why I stayed. I remember there's someone who asked. And I was like, that's like asking what's one plus one. And now I realize maybe I was too unfair because... Maybe the reason is not as obvious as I think it is. I don't know why I removed this from here. So if you get, I'd cover that in this video. For you to understand why I stayed in the UK, you need to understand my thought process. And I'm gonna start from when I had not left my home in Bristol. And you know, the thought process and my plans and all that. And how I arrived at every decision I made. So I have to go through that so you can understand where I came from, what I was thinking. And why I decided to eventually do whatever I did and stay in the country. Before I do that, I have a transcription course, a very comprehensive transcription course. As you know, transcription is one of the most popular online jobs or work from home jobs right now. And some people usually want to make money as transcriptionists. And there are so many jobs, especially if you are in the UK or the US or wherever, Canada or Australia. I know people from Kenya or Nigeria, we are limited in terms of the platforms you can access. But if you're in the UK or US or wherever, you have so many platforms that you can access. And it's very difficult for you to get hired if you do not know how to do the job. So I created a very comprehensive transcription course that you can take. And you learn everything you need to learn about transcription. After taking that course, you don't need to struggle with anything. You don't need to watch any videos because I have even put their jobs that you can apply for after you're done with a transcription course and it only costs $50. So once you're done with that course, you'll have everything you need in order to apply for jobs, pass tests and start working and start making some, you know, side income or full-time income depending on how you want to approach it. Access the course using the link in the video description and I will also put the link in the pinned comment section. Now in March, April, you know, around that time I had figured out that I am not in a very good situation and I remember there was this idea floating in my mind that um, maybe you can just tolerate it for a couple of years and, you know, do your time and see whether you can just get out after five years you know after five years is when people get alert and all that and i was like no way i can survive that long like i don't know my tolerance level for some things is just so low so i remember that was something that was going on in my mind but i could not convince myself to do that there were nights i would say uh, maybe i can't keep up with it and then the next morning i wake up and i'm like oh my god no anyway so i was thinking about how I would solve the problem because I'm an analyst, I'm a problem solver. When I face a problem, I usually want to go at it in a logical manner. So I was just reading online, finding information, reading articles, trying to see what are my options, how can I get out of this situation. And I was even um, looking at what people have done, people who are in the situation I was in, what they've done. So I was reading stories on Facebook groups. I think visa Facebook groups. I was reading articles on solicitors' websites. So I just wanted to understand what my options were. One of my options was looking for a job. As you know, I left employment in 2021 and I thought to myself that I will never get back to employment but here i was and i was like i mean it's one of the solutions so as a data analyst professionally i'm a medical researcher i have done biostatistics but i decided to veer off the medical path i worked in knh and nhif and i was it's like medicine anything medicine is really not for me so i just left out the medical part of my degree and just went into the statistics part data analysis and then i taught myself programming so python yeah i can also create algorithms so if you know machine learning so i can create machine learning algorithms i can create websites i feel like i have skills here and there but there are some things i'm really good at like creating websites and 
programming in Python and analyzing data and creating algorithms and all that. I feel like I am a bit rusty right now because I haven't done it in a while. So those are some of the things I could do and I thought it wouldn't be impossible for me to get a job. I actually remember I started applying for jobs on Indeed and I also got a statement of comparability. Whew, you guys should watch this video to the very end because the information I'm about to share, I'm sure it will help someone out there. Remember to like the video by the way. Like the video, comment and subscribe and share please share with anyone who needs the information I'm about to share in this video. So if you've moved from Kenya to England or from Asia or India, wherever to England and you want to get a job, study and stuff like that, um, you are advised or rather I applied for a statement of comparability. So this is where you submit your educational certificate, your documents like I submitted my degree, my KCSC certificate, I also submitted my KCP certificate, which turned out to be useless. So they just needed the um, KCSC certificate and the degree. So I submitted them and then they compare that, the education in Kenya with England, and they say you got, let's say, Form 4 KCSC, what is it compared with? So I remember mine was like GCSE. And for degree, they compared it and they said, actually, this is the same level as a degree in England or something like that. So I got my statement of comparability and I was applying for jobs because that, you know, when you are a foreigner in England, employers want to know that you have GCSE and if you say you have a degree, your degree from Kenya won't matter much to them. So that statement of comparability gives them a bit of confidence to know that even though you studied outside of England, the skills you gained are comparable to what you could have learned in England. So um, it's a very, very important statement. It's a document, by the way. I think I paid a couple of pounds. I don't remember how much it was, but you just go to their website, which I have forgotten. Oh, hell no. I will put a link in the video description to their website. So I got that statement and I was applying for jobs. Knowing that I would submit that to prove my education level at a bachelor. So I was submitting that to just give them a bit of confidence in me. And I remember I applied for a couple of jobs. Well, I got sketched shortlisted for an interview, but someone got hired before my interview did. <laughs> that gave me confidence because it was affirmed in me that I can actually get a job if I look harder. So my first option was getting a job and i remember after um, being shortlisted for that interview i said i have always wanted to, to evolve not say more about evolve into a different field one thing about me is i do a lot of things because i get bored easily once i am good at something it bores me after some time or i usually want to look for another challenge or something like that so i have always wanted to go into cyber security as you know a tech person and i thought that could increase my desirability or my value in the workspace or in the job hunting whatever so i thought i could do a certification in that you know i'm not the kind of person who believes you have to go to a university and pay ten thousand plus pounds to get a bachelor so you can get hired in this world right now the age you're living in i believe that all people want is skills you just want to know that you can do the job you claim you want and that's it so i said i'd get a certification i remember i paid for two courses or two certifications one tableau analyst certification because although i'm a data analyst uh, i was not very conversant with tableau if you know tableau enough is enough <laughs> i'm going so technical into this i don't even know why but <laughs> Anyway, oh my god. So that's Tableau Data Analyst and I don't remember Cyber Security Certification. I don't remember the exact name, but it, it was from ISC Squared. If you know ISC Squared. Yeah, but that one I didn't pay. I think it was free. They are offering these certifications. They were. I don't know whether they're still doing that right now. 
to people in England. So, you know, they can increase the number of people who can do cyber security or something like that. So they had uh, like a coupon or something. So I was doing these two courses and I was like, I will just spend time working on these two. And then once I am done with the Tableau, data analyst and the cyber security certification and I have them, then I can start applying for jobs outside data analysis. I'd still apply for jobs in data analysis, but cyber security gives me an edge, you know. I mean, it's a very interesting field and it's on high demand and all that so that was what i was doing okay that was option one getting jobs option two look for um school like enroll in university you know masters because i have a bachelor's but i've never really wanted to do masters but this was also an option yeah that's, that was my second option my third option was to pack my bags and go back home there's a reason that is my third option. So the reason going back home, like going back to Kenya was my third option, is because, first of all, if you've not noticed, I am a very ambitious person. I, sometimes it's a weakness, but most of the time it's a strength. But I, I am ambitious. I want to change the world. I have big dreams. I'm not just the kind of girl who just dreams of getting married and getting babies. And I mean, that's cool. But... I feel like I have a bigger purpose and I am living for me, for my mother, to achieve the things she wanted to achieve, to achieve the things I want to achieve. And, you know, for everyone who looks up to me, I am pretty ambitious. That is number one. And I do not like to fail. And I don't know how you'll take this. I don't expect us to be vibrating at the same wavelength. You're free to see this, how you want to see it, according to how you were raised and your environment and all that. But I don't know how this will come out but i considered going back home failing because i did invest a lot of time in this situation that i was in for like two years being in a relationship and i also left my home like sold my stuff moved out of my apartment yeah like i made a huge move and you do not know this but it was not like my first option my first option was to stay in Kenya. That was really the option I was going for. I remember I had, you know, asked that we just stay in Kenya, but the request was not accepted. So I decided because, you know, love matters, heart matters. So I decided to move. So then I felt like I made so many sacrifices. The time I invested, the process of applying for sports visa is not easy and it's not cheap. Ideally, I did all the work in terms of the research and the application and blah, blah, blah. And it took a lot of my time, not even forgetting the anxiety that comes with waiting for your results like for six months because that time it was six months because of COVID. And then like after coming over here, it's like my life just fell apart, you, you see, and going back home would seem like me running back with a tail between my legs. Do you guys understand? I was trying to see what exactly have I achieved in this two year period. And all I could see was what I have lost. That is the easiest way to put it. And then you see me going back home, it's not like I have a family. It's not like my parents are somewhere in a big home which they built and I can just go back and chill with them and you know they be patient with me and provide for me and wait for me to get back on my feet and blah blah but it's not like i had a home i had left that i would just fly back to and you know get in and pick up where i had left off no going back to kenya means starting from the ground up just the way i was gonna start here so there was no difference going back to kenya means me going to live with my sister who has her own baggage and you know just adding on to her baggage until I was back on my feet and you see like my siblings look up to me a lot of people look up to me and I could just not feel them like that to become a baggage to become a burden and if I fail if I do that where will they get the inspiration or the motivation to go for their dreams and to just take risks and all that I mean going back it's not a risk, it's just me, you know, I don't know. It was an option, but it was not the best option, right? And this is me thinking logically. I told you guys I'm an analyst. When I solve problems, I think about those problems logically. I wouldn't like make decisions, pick decisions like this based on emotions. So that is um, why I considered going back home sort of a failure. But now what happened is, oh yeah. My notes that I want to veer off these notes. You see all these plans, going to school and 
looking for jobs were pegged on me staying at where I was at and you know just using the time I was there to look for a job and all that but I'm still under the sports visa but it happened that I just couldn't keep up with that anymore so things happened and I had to leave in April so that was like my fourth month like going to my fifth month in the UK so I had to leave the home which rendered me homeless which I will go into in my next video so I left the home which means applying for a job was gonna be more difficult one because i had no address no permanent address two because now you see a sports visa ties you to your partner you are in the country because of your partner because of your relationship that is why you get a sports visa if you leave your partner it means your sports visa is null and void it means you stop being in the country legally I don't know if that makes sense whether you report it to the um, home office or not you can see even in there was it a stamp in my passport it had my partner's name on it this tells you that or is it my B brp i don't know this tells you that you are actually tied to your partner and the moment you leave your partner your visa stops being legal you lose your legal legal status legal immigration status i don't even know what i'm saying but you guys understand so i left my partner which means me applying for a job because they will ask you when you're applying for a job they'll ask you your immigration status and some of them would want proof okay they'll ask for your address these are the two things i did not have i mean i had the skills i could get a job and then the course i had paid for i could not complete it i remember i paid for it april 6 and i was leaving at the end of april so i did not really have time to complete the course and remember um i was working on the course but i was not 100 percent healthy up here so it was sort of a struggle as well the job option lost to it and then the school option would have made sense if i did not have an immigration problem but now if i was gonna go the school way like masters i was gonna have to change to a uh, study visa and you know study visas are expensive because you have to i think show funds is it Thirty thousand pounds or something like that depending on the cost and all that and yo i didn't have thirty thousand pounds lying somewhere in my bank account so yeah that was not gonna fly now another thing for the work the person who was gonna employ me after leaving was gonna have to give me a work visa and you guys know how hard it is to get a work visa so i had two options after leaving the first option was to apply for ILR indefinite leave to remain based on my circumstances and the second option was to just go home regardless of how I felt about that and I'm not saying that I was so much against going home no I mean as much as the logical part of me had all these reasons to imagine me going back home means failing i also knew that for that moment i would fail but i would get back up on my feet after some time because it's me or <laughs> it's me god is with me i am with me but logically we have to um, address a problem step by step so i understood it's not the worst thing that can ever happen and yeah so i had those two options I left based on my circumstances and going back home. So after I left the home, of course, I did all I had to do to apply for my LR. I I LR. I collected all the documents I needed. I engaged with everyone I all the people I had to engage with and a lot of people came through for me and i am so grateful for me not a lot of people but the people who i divulged information to they really came through for me and with their help i was able to apply for the ilr i think i'll make another video for the ilr how i applied and my journey to that it was not really an easy process and i knew that if this application gets rejected i will have to go back home you see and i think i had made peace with that at the back of my mind, I think I knew it still feel like failing for me, but if my alert gets rejected, I would have no choice. And that is okay because there's no way I'm staying in a country legally. No way. I'm not like I'm not countryless. <laughs> so I applied for ILR and thankfully it was approved. I submitted all the information, everything that was required, and I just prayed and crossed my fingers and said, God, you know the path you have um, cut out for me. You know where I'm headed. Um, you know where this road leads. You, in fact, you know the road where I'm supposed, which I'm supposed to be taking. You know my future. So I just said, I have done my part. 
now it's the ball is in your court it's your time to dribble and god did his thing and then my eyelash got approved and i was so happy like i thank god for that if it is sometimes i sometimes i'm thinking oh my god something is horrible why well, i'm like i remember test do you remember remember what god did for you do you remember so yeah i remember i left my home in april and then i spent april okay may june july yeah i think i applied for the eyelash in july it takes a bit of time to come out so i applied for eyelash in july so it was may june because you know there's a time limit on these things ideally once you've left your partner your sports visa is null and void and you have to move fast you have to move fast. I remember someone, oh, that video, that video I was telling you guys about. I think those people took it down. They also had, you know, um, made a video sp smearing and attacking my character and my work and all that. I think they took it down. I don't know. I am going to have to check. But yeah, I think they took it down. But I remember that lady was said, oh, if she was so sad, why did she go and uh, why did she wait to apply for I love first? And I'm like, because each problem at a time, okay? You have to deal with the more pressing issues first <laughs> before you deal with one that is not pressing. That is why my priority was to deal with this immigration issue. Okay, because without that, everything else would just come down crumbling. So, like, sometimes you have to think before you see stuff. Um, but that is how it went and i got approved ideally now you're wondering why i chose to stay like minus me having the option to stay after my ilr was approved why really did i stay and on top of that i remember i told you guys i'm ambitious and in terms of my work i started this video saying that when you are in the uk and you are like you have access to more like platforms like online work platforms and all that so that's one of the reasons and someone who's passionate about the gig economy and who creates content on digital jobs and online businesses there's a lot for me to offer from here in terms of work and the platforms that i get access to in kenya there's so many platforms that don't, you don't have access to that it's so hard for you to review such platforms and my audience for Teso gamba my main channel is global so i'm not just watched by kenyans i'm watched by people from the us uk they're all looking for the same things you know reviews of platforms where they can get jobs and if i do not have access to three quarter of the platforms then i am not able to help them so that is one number two also monetization options like i mean monetizing content on instagram and tiktok people from the uk and us have more options you know they can earn from in-stream ads there's even affiliate marketing there's blah 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 there's a lot but when you're in kenya there's very little you have access to i know in kenya like on tiktok you earn via do they say gifts this they say tap tap the screen so gifts and maybe if a company approaches you directly and they want to pay you directly to create a promotional video for their product that way but then there are more options if you're in the uk where there's gifts there's subscriptions there's affiliate marketing where tiktok shop for creators where you can promote content there's even working with artists these creator fund there's so many options if you are in a location where you get access to that so you guys understand okay so that was uh, very important for me and to be honest now that i see all the things happening like all the people getting killed in kenya the women children getting kidnapped you know and i remember how horrified i used to be sometimes at night living alone that someone would break in and steal my stuff or kill me or both and the fear that someone will grab your stuff um while you're walking in town or just anywhere it's not a good life to live in fear that way and i'm not saying now everyone in kenya lives in fear no yeah i mean it's not a good thing the security in kenya is a bit wanting in terms of like here people can walk around you can go outside and vlog and no one will i mean people do i have had stories of phones getting snatched in london actually i have but if you look at the rates at which the, these crimes are committed, the rates are very low compared to the rates in Kenya. And right now with the women getting killed and others getting beheaded, I am glad I didn't go back. I am scared. I have spent the last one week being scared in my bed 
because I have sisters, I have people I care about, and I'm always praying God keep them safe. You know, just may they not meet nobody, may they just stay home, and God just cover them, cover them with your blood, so evil people don't see them. And yeah, now looking back, I'm like I think I made the right decision not to go back. Of course, I'll go back to visit and all that, but. <clears throat> Mm. Yeah, so there's that, and then there's just the adventure part. I mean, I've lived in Kenya for 26 years, and God gave me the opportunity to seek a bit of adventure, go to another country. As you know me, I'm a homebody. I didn't even travel as much when I was in Kenya because I was always at home. And it happened that I can live in a different country and experience and build a life there and all that. And who am I to say no to an opportunity? No way. I'm not like that. God knows. If he didn't want me to be in this country, my application could have been rejected. And if it was rejected, I'd just go home. Okay, go home and take the path that God has put out for me. So we also have to live in acceptance that sometimes our will is not God's will. And when your will and God's will align, that is so beautiful. And I think for me, for this particular aspect, what I wanted and what God willed for me and of was in alignment. And I'm so grateful for that. 